So let's make these following petals. I make a new file, name it petal.js, and make sure you add the file in HTML. I make a class petal. Then in this constructor, we're gonna set the individual parameters for each petal. So, what we can think of as individual parameters? Hmm. For example, the size of the petal, right? Then the location and the falling velocity. For now, I randomize them like this. Next, I make a function to display the petal. So, let's start with simply display an ellipse. And I make another function to display the petals falling. That's easy, just add the velocity to the location. Okay, now we're gonna call the class and the functions, then let's see what happens. So I make an array petals. Then end of the setup, I store all the petals into this. In the draw function, let's actually display the appearance. Hmm, okay, so let's see it's falling down. Yeah, okay, it's working. So far, so good. But now the petals will keep for infinitely, so I make another function, reinitialize. Then write like, if the petals have fallen until slightly below the canvas height, then reposition them at slightly above the canvas. So call the function at here. Mm, that's working great. We see the petals keep coming in from the top. Now we got this very basic falling particle like stuff. So I think it's time to obsess the detail a little bit. So first we need to make them look like actual petals. I really really wanna use a ping image for that, but you know, unfortunately we can't subtract by image, so instead I draw a vector shape by p5 functions. I use function push, pop, and translate to move the origin point to the petal location. Then with this begin shape and end shape, we sandwich the vertices to draw a shape. Hey hello friends, uh, sorry for the interrupting. Now I use this my hand drawn to explain. <laughs> and so this is the petal we're gonna draw. A very angular petal. <laughs> um, so uh, here we have 10 vertices here, 0, vertex 0, 1, 2, da 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 to 9, 0 to 9. Uh, we have 10 vertices here. And currently we we are drawing this ellipse, right? So I use the, the, that this dot radius for easiness. For instance, this vertex 0 is the coordinate is x is 0 and y is minus radius times 1.5, right? You see that? So in this function vertex, I write like so, like 0 and um, minus this dot radius times 1.5, right? Yeah. Okay, I wrote all the vertices, so I rewrote it. Hmm, that looks okay. So have you got the same result? I down the size a little bit. I also give them natural random rotation, so I make two variables, this dot angle and this dot angle add, then set like this. Then I make a function petal rotate and let's add a rotation inside that. Lastly, call this P rotate between the push and the pop. Between the two, that's important. Hmm, kinda close to the final result, but for me, something is not right. Oh, maybe I should map the velocity along with the radius. Because in reality, the more closer the object to the camera, more looks bigger and moving faster, right? That's gonna create a feeling of depth. So instead of randomizing, I map the minimum and the maximum of the radius to change the velocity. Hmm, I feel this is much better. What do you think?
Speaking of depth of field, there are two things we can do more. One, I want to have a numbers ratio like more of the smaller petals and less of the bigger petals. Because when we take a shot of falling blossoms or something like that, we often see some of the petals close to the camera and lots of lots of small ones behind it. And secondary, this crispy nice bra effect. So, to control the numbers by the size, I want to actually change this array petals to 2D arrays. I'm gonna create 3 small arrays inside these petals to contain the petals with different sizes and adjust each numbers. Okay, I make a small array here. Next, I make a nested for a loop. The each time, inside that, calculate the number of the petals to store in the small array, then actually store the calculated number of the petals. After that, we store the small array into the big array, petals, then initialize the small array. That iterates three times. And also change here to iterate through all the 2D array. Okay, it's still working. Alright, at this moment, the number of the petals in the three small arrays are controlled, but the size and the falling velocity is still random, since we set like so in the class. So instead, I want to give the minimum and maximum values through arguments min r and max r. Also make the velocity depends on that. I include the i in the argument so the petal size between the three small arrays is gonna be different. Hmm, I think it's working. I actually copy this this dot angle equal one, and in the reinitialize I reset the angle like so. So every time the petals go back to the top, the angle is initialized like so. I feel that's gonna look more natural. So the last thing we're gonna add is the blur effect. And that's quite easy when I put this one line of code between the push and the pop. Yeah, it affects like so. To adjust the blur amount by the petal size, I pass the amount value through an argument. I said it like the better is smaller, the more bigger bra amount. Mmm, that looks awesome. Now the bigger petals are very sharp, but small ones are nicely blurred. Or instead blur the big petals. I found maybe that looks more realistic. Oh by the way, if you want to know more about this super fast bra effect, make sure to watch this video over here.